In this video, we're going over four tracking techniques that you must learn in After Effects. All right, so here we have a drone shot of a truck driving and we wanna replace the side of the truck with our own graphic. This is a quick pre-comp that I put together that has some text inside, a color solid matching the color of the truck body and some grunge textures. Really important to note, make sure whether you're using a single layer graphic or a pre-comp with multiple layers, that the size matches the size of the main comp, otherwise the tracking data will cause the image to misalign. To get started with our tracking, we need to add Mocha to our clip. After Effects comes with a light version built in called Mocha AE, but there's also a pro version as well that you can purchase with a lot more functionality. But for this basic demonstration, all we need is the built in version. Click on the Launch Mocha button to open up the Mocha interface. Now, unlike the built-in After Effects tracking tools, which use points to figure out motion in a shot, Mocha uses something called Planar Tracking, which tracks full surfaces and textures. The first thing we need to do is zoom into the clip by holding Z and then clicking and dragging in, then hold down the middle mouse button or X on the keyboard to reposition the view. Next, we need to draw a spline around the side of the truck. Grab the spline tool and mouse click on the first corner. Then move the cursor over to the next corner and click to add another point, and then repeat again for the other two corners. To complete the spline, click again on the first point that you made. The corners of our spline are by default rounded, but since our truck body plane has 90 degree corners, all we need to do is grab the handle of each spline corner and pull out to tighten the curve. Next, we need to make sure our planar surface is actually following the angle and perspective of our truck, so turn on the show planar surface and show planar grid buttons. We can see that currently the planar surface is just flat and not in the correct perspective, so grab the corners of the planar surface and place each one on the outer boundary of the surface in the clip. Now if we zoom out, we can see that everything is lined up perfectly. You can insert a temporary placeholder to make double sure by coming over to Insert Clip and selecting Logo or Grid that will give you a visual idea of how things are looking. But if we drag the playhead through the timeline, we still don't have any tracking data yet. So the next thing we need to do is come down to the Motion panel and select all parameters, including Perspective, since in this shot there are perspective changes. Then come up to the Tracking buttons and hit Track Forward. Moco will begin tracking the surface of our track. Truck. Once it's done, double check to make sure there aren't any spots that slipped and then hit the save button in the top left corner and then exit Mocha. Now we need to tell After Effects what to do with our tracking data. If we go back to the effect control panel under Mocha, we have a few options. We can view the mat, which will give us a black and white alpha view, white indicating our mat, and black indicating transparency. We can choose apply mat, which will mask out our mat in our clip. Then we can add feathering or invert the mat. But for this, we need to instead apply the tracking data to the graphic that we're trying to stick onto the truck. So to do this, open up the tracking data tab and select create tracking data and select the layer that we tracked in Mocha. Then under under Export Options, select Corner Pin or Corner Pin Support Motion Blur if there's any movement in the shot. Then under Layer Export 2, select the Graphic Layer and hit Apply Export. Now we can see that all of our tracking data has been applied to our graphic and it's sticking perfectly to the truck. But if you notice, the edge of the graphic is the full size of the side of the truck and we need it to be tucked in a little bit more to fit inside the metal framing. To do this, duplicate the original clip and move it above the graphic layer. Then on the duplicated clip, go up to Mocha and under Mat, click the Create AE Masks button. This will generate a mask that matches the spline that we made inside of Mocha. Add a bit of feathering to the mask and then on the graphic layer under the track mat drop down menu select alpha mat and now the graphic will crop to the size of the masked layer above. Then just add a tiny bit of blur to the graphic layer to match better with the footage and any other changes that you may want. All right, so the first thing we want to do is right click on the clip and go up to track and stabilize and select track camera. After Effects will generate a number of tracker points to figure out the camera motion at different depth points of the scene. To see how well our tracker did, under the advanced tab, check the average error number. We want this to be as close to zero as possible. To force the camera tracker to get more accurate results, set the solve method to typical and turn on the detailed analysis checkbox. Let the tracker analyze the camera again and this time we have a much better result. Next, select a group of spots along the ground plane and then right click and choose set ground plane and origin. Then right click again and create a solid and camera. Adjust the direction of the solid so that the green Y axis arrow is pointing into the scene and the red X axis arrow is pointing to camera right. Then select spots around other prominent planes in the scene like the walls, ledges, and tops or sides of objects that we want to track things onto and add solids for each of those surfaces. Then we'll go ahead and rename all the solids according to the surfaces they're tracked to for good organization. Now we need to normalize the center point of our 3D scene, and there's a few different ways that we could go about this. For this, we're using an awesome free script that we got from workbench.tv, but there is a way that you can do it manually. It just takes longer, and this script is a great time saver. 
We'll have a link in the description below where you can get the script for yourself. And they also have a great video explaining the manual process as well as the process using the script. Once we have all our surfaces marked with solids, we'll go ahead and select all of our solids and hit the normalize track button on the script. And now After Effects recognizes our ground solid as the center of our scene and all the other solids are in the correct location based on that center point. If at any point we need to add another surface later on, all we need to do is go back to our camera tracker, select another surface location, create a solid, and click the plus button on the script and it will add it to our normalized track data. Then we'll go ahead and hide all the solids for now. We'll go back to these individually as we attach our effects in a little bit. Next, we need to create a caustic effect to be able to make our surfaces look like they're reflecting light passing through the water. Create a new comp and call it caustics and then create a new solid and name it the same. Next, add a fractal noise effect and alt click on the evolution stopwatch and type in the expression time times 230 to give it some movement. Then add a CC vector blur effect and set the amount to around 30 and the ridge smoothness to something like three. Now I'm working on a 4K timeline for this, so I'll go ahead and scale it up a bit so that the pattern isn't so small. But if you're working on an HD timeline, it'll look good as is. And now that we have our caustic effect ready to go, we can start tracking it into our scene with the solids we created. Let's start off by choosing one of our wall surfaces and duplicating the solid, then dragging it up above all of our solid layers for organization and then unhide it. Then with the duplicated solid still selected, grab the caustics comp and while holding the alt key, drag it onto the solid. The solid will change to our caustic comp while retaining all of its 3D track properties. Now we can go ahead and scale and position the layer to fit the size of the wall. Next, we'll add a mask just a little bit within the boundary of the layer and add some feathering to get rid of that hard edge. After that, we'll set the blending mode to something like overlay to blend with the wall texture. Depending on the surface textures and light hitting those surfaces differently, we'll have to play around with different blending modes to get the right look, but overlay seems to work good for this one. Adjust the layer opacity down a little bit to blend it more, and then add a curves effect and make a basic S curve to give the effect a little bit of contrast. Then simply just repeat this process for all the other tracked surfaces, changing blending modes, adjusting opacity and curves to blend according to the surface texture and lighting of each surface. Now, for a spot like this at the top of the wall, we obviously want a caustic effect hitting it as well, but if we duplicate the layer and reposition it up, we have this beam that's obstructing the wall and we need to mask it out. We can do this super easy with the new updated track mat features in After Effects 2023. First, let's unhide the beam solid layer and resize it across the length of the beam. Then on the new caustic layer, we'll select the beam solid layer in the track mat menu and set the mode to alpha mat and select the invert button next to it. Now the layer is masked around the boundary of the track mat, and if we need to adjust it, we can just adjust the position of the beam solid. Super easy. After we've completed placing all of our caustics around the scene, the next thing we want to do is add some kelp to give it more of that under the ocean feel. For this, we're using some kelp assets that we got from Production Crate, and this method is very similar to the caustics method. Duplicate the ground solid and move it to the top of the layers, then alt drag the kelp asset onto the duplicate ground layer. Now we can see the solid has changed into our kelp, but it's laying flat and we need it standing up. So we'll just grab the rotation gizmo and while holding the shift key, we'll rotate it along the X axis until it hits 90 degrees. Then we'll drag it along the X and Y coordinates, rotate it to face the camera and place it in the foreground of the camera to add some depth to the scene. In our camera options, let's enable depth of field to be on and adjust the blur level to add to the depth even more. Then just repeat the process by duplicating the kelp and rotating and positioning around the scene. If the color and lighting doesn't quite match that of the scene, we can simply just add a curves effect to each of the kelp layers and adjust each one accordingly. Now another thing that I'm noticing is that all of these kelp assets are moving at the same speed because they're just duplicates of each other, but we want them to have slight variation in their motion. Let's right click on each one and go to time and time stretch and set the duration to something like 130 to 150 to slow the movement down at different intervals per clip. Then click on the frame blending checkbox two times to smooth out any choppiness there might be from slowing the clips down. Next thing we want to do is add some light rays coming down into our scene from the water surface. To do that, create an adjustment layer and call it light rays. Then we'll pre-comp the layer and name it the same. Go into the pre-comp and drag in the original clip and place it below the adjustment layer. With the adjustment layer selected, we'll add a tint effect and a curves effect. Then we'll drag the black point of the curves effect toward the right along the bottom until everything turns pitch black right before it crunches out the sky. Next, we'll draw a rectangle mask on our original clip and set it to subtract to mask out the bright parts of the lower half of the scene. And then we'll add a black solid at the bottom to fill in the masked out section. Now we're left with only our sunlight source from above. We'll jump back into the main comp and set the light ray layer blending mode to screen. Then we'll add a CC radial fast blur effect. 
set the zoom to brightest and the amount to 100. Then place the center point of the effect above the comp where the sun would be to set the direction of the light. We can duplicate the radial blur effect to add some thickness to the rays, and then add a Gaussian blur effect with a relatively high value to soften them up. Now, since we're working with a scene that's outdoors and we can see the sky, we need to replace it with some ocean water to better sell the effect that we're under the surface. To do that, we're gonna use this ocean surface asset that we also got from Production Crate. Jumping back into the light rays pre-comp, we're gonna drag in our ocean surface asset, and like we saw with the kelp, this clip is a little bit short and fast in its movement, so let's time scale it to around 220 and then enable frame blending. Then we'll rename the layer to Ocean Surface. Next, duplicate the Light Rays Adjustment layer and create a Luma Mat set to the Ocean Surface layer above. This will use only the bright section that we created for the light rays, and it'll map it to the different brightness values of the ocean layer. Next, we need to add some floating bubble particles into the scene. Create a new solid and call it particles, then add a CC particle world effect to the layer. Hit Y on the keyboard and drag the layer back across the timeline so that our particles have already began generating before the first frame. Then back in the effect control panel, set the birth rate to 0.2 and the longevity to 100 so that our particles stay in the scene for the entire duration and don't die off. Next, let's push the position of our generator into the scene a little bit along the z-axis and adjust the x, y, and z radiuses to fill the entire scene. Under the physics tab, let's set the animation style to fractal omni, the velocity to zero, and the gravity to negative 0.002 so that the particles float upward. Then in the particle tab, set the particle type to faded sphere, the birth and death sizes to around 0.15 each, the size variation to 100%, max opacity to around 60%, and let's set the color to around a neutral gray. Now after all of that, we need to actually color grade the shot to give it that deep underwater blue look. So we'll create a new adjustment layer and call it look, and for this I'm using the Mojo 2 plugin from Red Giant because it has some cool presets I can start with and then adjust according to my taste, but you can also use the built-in Lumetri color effect to get a creative look with some tweaking. Then we'll add a curves effect to boost the blues and greens a little more and add an overall contrast curve. One thing I'm noticing that I don't like is how bright the light source is looking right now, so let's duplicate the light rays layer and place it underneath the first one. Then delete the effects from the duplicate, set the blending mode to hard light, add a tint effect and map the white to a subdued blue color, then set the opacity to 50%. Now we can see a little more of that ocean surface detail and the light isn't as harsh. One thing we're definitely missing from the overall look though is that cloudy murky look. So let's hop back into the look layer and add an optical glow effect from Red Giant. We'll set the amount to 3, the size to 1. 50, the fall off and highlights only to 30, the roll off to 70, and the vibrance to 100. Now it really feels like we're deep underwater. And last but not least, the final thing that we need to do is add some distorted refraction to the entire scene where it looks like everything's kind of warbling around a bit. Let's add one more adjustment layer and call it Turbulent Displace. Then we'll add a Turbulent Displace effect and set the amount to around 10, the size to 150, and the complexity to around 1.7. Then you can go back and add any more elements to the scene that you wish, like more kelp, fish, coral, change the size of the particles, anything that you think will add more details to the scene and then render out the final composite. All right, to get started, right click on your clip and go to track and stabilize and select track camera. After Effects will apply a 3D camera tracker to the layer and generate a number of tracker points that follow the camera movement of the scene in 3D space. Hover the mouse over any of these points until you find a good spot that is parallel with the surface that you're wanting to apply your image to. Select the points and then right click and choose Create Solid and Camera. Once these are created, select the solid layer, right click and select Precompose. Then open up the precomp and delete the solid. Head over to the project panel and select the image that you want to track in. These are the mural images that we created using Midjourney that we want to attach to the wall surfaces. This is just one example of an infinite number of ways that you can leverage AI to create custom elements for your scenes. You can check out our Midjourney video in the top right hand corner if you want to learn more about how to actually generate images with it. Select the image that you want to use from the project panel and take note of the resolution size. While still in the pre-comp, go to Composition and select Composition Settings. Change the pre-comp size to match the image and click OK. Then drag the image into the pre-comp and jump back into the main comp. You'll notice that the solid is now changed into the image which is now tracked onto the wall. Do some basic scaling and position adjustments until you're satisfied with the size and the placement. Select Soft Light or whichever blending mode you prefer in the Blending Mode menu, then press play to preview the tracking and then repeat the process for any other images that you want to track in. To finish things off, duplicate the original clip, drag it to the top, and mask out any surface obstructions that you don't want the image overlaying on by using the rotor brush tool, which you can learn more about by checking out our rotor brush video in the top right hand corner. All right, first thing we want to do is just drop the clip into the comp. And we'll go ahead and put the PNG in the comp 
and then create a new null object as well. We can go ahead and hide both of those for now. We go up to animation, hit track motion, and we're going to want to select position, rotation, and scale. We'll make these a little larger so we can see them. We want to select something that has a lot of contrast. And then hit the play button to start tracking. Once it's tracked, hit edit target, and then select the null, and then hit apply. So now we can scale down the security camera and place it where we want. Once that's done, you can pick whip the security camera to the null object and hit play, and it should stick to the wall. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and let us know what other effects you'd like to see us do down in the comments below.